Hello. Uh, today uh, we are going to see the last uh, of this uh, Inception lecture series and you will allow me to get uh, more personal in this approach to the follow-ups, to the next steps in the research which is needed to build up this metropolitan discipline. As I mentioned from the beginning, we, this is a new discipline. Uh, it has never existed uh, in the world because we uh, had only three metropolis uh, in history uh, and now we have 600 and these metropolis are growing very fast and uh, we do not have a theoretical approach, a pragmatic, practical approach to that and uh, we have to develop it. So this Inception series is the, the origin of that approach. I worked, uh, I have been working to that for 30 years and uh, since the Madrid Metropolitan Plan and even before in 1996 and uh, and uh, this is uh, the result of those 20, 30 years' work. No, but uh, we are only in the first steps of that approach. And let me share with you what we need to do next. We are working with many uh, universities around the world to build up this uh, metropolitan theoretical approach, uh, mainly with the Milano Polytechnico, as well with MIT, as well with Guadalajara University, uh, in Mexico, but uh, with other universities as well. And I must be very thankful to people like Ernesto D'Alfonso of the Politecnico, uh, Antonella Contin of the Politecnico, uh, uh, Gabriel Lanfranchi from MIT, uh, and uh, Ramon Reyes from Guadalajara University. We are all working together into that kind of uh, future. We have uh, in MIT the Metro Lab uh, initiative where we gather, to, we gather, we get together every year on January and we discuss among the uh, most uh, uh, brilliant specialists of metropolitan planning, governance and so on for uh, 15 days in, in uh, Boston. We have as well courses for professors uh, up to now in Spanish for professors of Mexico and the rest of Latin America but in the future those courses can be uh, developed as well in English or French and um, that takes place in Guadalajara University in Mexico. We have different areas of research, some pragmatic, practical uh, brain shops that we have seen in a previous presentation. Uh, we have 600 metropolis around the world. We have uh, made brain shops uh, in, in 12 or 9, 12 metropolises, so there is a lot of work to, to create the consensus and to create the main uh, uh, strategic projects that we have to develop for these 600 metropolis. It can take even as far as 24 years if we, we go slow, but uh, we, we can uh, 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 go quicker in that pace. We have to uh, capacity uh, built uh, for professionals, uh, not only uh, scholars and academics, uh, the decision makers, politicians and and civil servants, um, the, the working with academics uh, has a multiplier effect because all the new generations of metropolitan planners will have that knowledge for the future and we have to make the metro strategic uh, and structural plans uh, for every one of those metropolis but that is beyond the scope of this uh, uh, capacity building approach that we are dealing in within these lectures. Um, we have a problem there, the, what is called the NIMFO approach, the not in my terms of office approach that uh, is accountable for trillions of dollars lost in the wrong decisions. When politicians or civil servants think that they are going to be there for a very short time, whatever problem that is not going to happen in their terms of office, they don't care. It's the next guy that has to solve it. And that lack of responsibility in the long term and just looking at your four years and not realizing that your responsibilities for 30, 40, 50 years ahead really is a, is a lack of responsibility. The population, the electorate has to account, uh, to, to, they should be accountable for, uh, for, uh, to the electorate and to the population. So as we mentioned, uh, planning is taking uh, immediate decisions, that's fine for the terms of office, but those decisions have to be within a framework of a vision of the long term and that is the NIMTO uh, approach that has to be avoided and in many practical circumstances you have that when you deal. We have seen the brain shops, how we deal with the strategic uh, vision of the metropolis, how we see the projects that will fill that strategic vision, how we develop those projects in a very basic uh, way, uh, three days is not 
then the projects you want to develop, really, you will have to commission the, the full development of that project. And then we present that so the population is empowered, uh, professionals, academics, the media, the, uh, the general population, and they understand what is the future of that metropolis, and that has an enormous value uh, for the future. These are the places we have already developed those brain shops, different types of brain shops, uh, with uh, the uh, Milano Politecnico, the INTA, International uh, uh, Urban Development Association, and uh, the, with the IDB, the European Union, many of them. We have another uh, approach to it, which is uh, the course for professors. And in that academic metropolitan discipline curriculum, we have all the elements we have been looking at in this uh, Inception ser uh, series with more uh, deep approach to it because it takes longer, obviously. And we are doing that for the Latin American context in Guadalajara University. And we do that once, uh, once a year. So uh, if you want to join, uh, just uh, get in touch with Ramon Reyes, professor there, which is the one which is running this. And you have here the curriculum that is going to be discussed. And then there is a, another approach, which is making a quick uh, structural uh, plan of a metropolis. Just in a week, just in 10 days, a simple one. But that gives you the framework of the metropolis. And you see how you have to develop the amount of land necessary where you put that amount of land depending on the gray and the green infrastructure network and then the act economic activities and the social facilities you will need related to that growth of land. Many of those metropolises, as we have seen, are doubling the size every, every uh, 14 years. Not the size of population, it's the size of the land because the, the wealthy you are, the, the smaller is the family uh, unit, the more dwellings you need. If instead of having families of five, you're going to get families of 2.5, you have to build another dwelling for each family. And how to put that and where to put it, we have a system, the metro matrix, the methodology development, that can be developed in a very broad approach in those days. We have uh, this kind of reticulous system. You see London, you see uh, America, the USA, you see Madrid, you see Calcutta. Um, the, the, these huge metropolis have this and you can work out figures within that system that allows you to work in more in a theoretical way. This is the more theoretical way. The, the matrix calculus allows you to give figures to realize what are the um, areas of less uh, equity in a metropolis and then focus your investment in those areas or what are the areas of higher efficiency and then produce the infrastructures needed to multiply, to spin off that metropolis, uh, that, that efficiency. And you can work that out in a matrix calculus approach that we, uh, we think is one of the next steps of this development. And this is not a new approach. You see here the uh, Loshu magic square that was 2000 before Christ, uh, developed the first matrix developed by the Chinese, the Chinese culture. You see that all the uh, diagonals and uh, horizontals and rows and columns uh, add up to 15. And this is a mathematical square, but it was used to know in what year the rivers were going to flood. So really, nature and mathematics are related and this kind of matrix approach provides you the tools to understand how those empirical processes take place in metropolis as the Chinese and then the Persians uh, uh, did as well uh, in their own culture. The areas of theoretical research will be the interscolarity, the different scales as we have seen, 150,000, 15,000, 1,500 and so on and so on. How to relate to each other, you cannot just work in one of the scales. So the process up down into those scales is absolutely necessary. The mathematics, the metro matrix calculus as we have seen, and politology, the, uh, uh, the beyond the confederal proposals as I've said in some of the previous presentations. Uh, the most common approach to metropolis now is a confederate approach, uh, which is uh, push 
uh, forward by the national governments that do not want to have uh, too powerful metropolises and backed as well by the multilaterals that are made out of those national governments. But that is a limit and we must, uh, well, that's a, a, a good path ahead uh, if you have nothing, but there is a limit and we must look beyond that limit what are the best uh, approaches. And we have been talking about the delegated unitary and the federal approach to that. And we must understand that academia uh, has to move beyond descriptions into solutions. Many of the academic uh, papers and books are uh, describing, and generally not in a first degree uh, knowledge, but in a secondary, uh, read uh, something that someone else has read, are describing what is happening in the metropolis. As, as uh, Marx said in the 19th century, philosophers have only interpreted the world, the point is to change it. So I would say that scholars are describing metropolises, but the point is to provide solution for them. And we are in a turning point. We are in a shift of paradigm. Uh, we have seen how paradigms have a, a slope of growth, they work, and then they start not to work, and then you have to change the paradigm, as Newton did with uh, physics in the uh, 18th century, and as Einstein has done with uh, relativity in the 20th century. There is a moment you have to break the paradigm that doesn't work anymore and you have to create a new paradigm. And that's what we have to do. That's what we are doing right now. The urban paradigm is fine, has worked for urbans, but then they do not work for metropolitans. So we have to change that paradigm. And, and the sooner we do change that paradigm, the more efficient is going to be the future. Because then instead of going to the downturn, downslope, we change it. And we are in 2010, 2016, uh, Habitat 3, we are really in the limit of the old paradigm, and we have to create the new metropolitan paradigm, which is the metropolitan disciplines. These are uh, 100 places where that approach, Metromatrix, has been developed. You can have a look at it in the web page uh, at the end of this uh, slideshow. And there are, these are 100, and there are 600 metropolis around the world, so we have a lot to work and you are invited to join us in this huge effort which is historical, creating a discipline for the new metropolitan age. We have different technologies which are easy to apply, but you must know how to apply them. And if we don't, this is going to be the inheritance we are going to leave for the next generation. A world of slums that we have not been able to manage this informal economy, this informal urban, this informal development that we have not been to our manage. So we have a huge responsibility and you are invited to join in this historical trend to build up that discipline. Thank you very much. This was the end one of the presentations, the lectures, and you can download the whole set out of this link in the web page and happy to contact and to develop together a way forward. Thank you.